DW Radio, your information station. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the WDW Newscast. I am Lou Mangello from WDWRadio.com. Today is Wednesday, September 28th, 2011, and this week's newscast is brought to you by our friends over at TouringPlans.com. They are the team behind the unofficial guide to Walt Disney World, helping you maximize your time in the parks. Whether you're a first-timer or a repeat visitor and you want to save up to maybe four hours, forget not five, five is ridiculous, but four hours, you can save it with touringplans.com. They also have the lines application, the crowd calendar, wait times, a blog, lots more. Be sure and check them out over at touringplans.com slash WDW Radio. Tell them we said hi. So the big news this week, in case uh, my friends here, Scott Otis and Tony Caggiano, who are joining me in studio tonight, (laughs) no good can come of this. (laughs) Uh, uh, The big news this week is what is coming up this weekend, because Walt Disney World's 40th anniversary is going to take place on Saturday, October 1st. And uh, I'm sure a lot of us are here that Walt Disney World, Disney is officially acknowledging the first they are going to have some events taking place this weekend there's also lots of communities that are going to be down including our own uh celebrating the first in our in their in our own special ways and and we'll get to that uh but if you are going to be in walt disney world this saturday october 1st there is some stuff going on and the celebration is really going to begin just before 10 a.m uh there's going to be a cavalcade of disney characters starting i believe from town square ending up over at Cinderella Castle, and then there is going to be uh, a presentation with Walt Disney World President Meg Crofton, a cavalcade, a cavalcade of characters. And I will tell you, and if I was a betting man, and I am, that I think we might see some uh, some characters from days gone by, some characters maybe that we haven't seen before, Little Orange Bird. I'm keeping my fingers crossed for you. Hatbox Ghost would love it. <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, there is going to be... Uh, a ceremony there. Rumor has it the Dapper Dans are going to be there, leading a little sing-along of maybe some classic Disney park tunes. Uh, there's also going to be, of course, some very special uh, October 1st only Walt Disney World merchandise going to be available. Uh, 40th anniversary t-shirts. So There's going to be one for ladies and one for the gentlemen. You can choose whichever you two would like to wear. Uh, there's also going to be some special artist signings over at the Diamond Horseshoe and Uptown Jeweler. So people like Noah, a famous Disney artist, is going to be there. Jody Daly and Kevin Kidney. Jim Shore. Robert Olszewski uh, does the great miniatures, and he's got a couple of new of the uh, Pocket Pals coming out, I think, just in time for the 40th. Uh, There's also going to be, this is the important stuff, 40th anniversary cupcakes. Love cupcakes. Which we will, of course, have to partake in uh, just for research purposes only. Magic Kingdom is going to be open from 9 a.m. until midnight, October 1st. So it should be a a fun-filled day for those who are there to celebrate the first. Let me ask you a quick question before we get on to what we're doing for the 40th hour, hour show. Do you think that uh, other than people who are very much in tune with what's going on in the online communities, who follow the podcasts and the blogs and things like that, do you think that uh, a lot of people, the regular guest is going to be aware that October 1st is the 40th anniversary or, you know, much like Epcot's 25th, a lot of guests just didn't really know what was going on? Right. I was going to think about Ep- Epcot's 25th because I was there and, um, yeah, there weren't a lot of people that were... Um other than the, the diehard Disney fans that were really aware of what was going on. There was a big presentation at the, at the fountain that we all enjoyed. But other than that, and other than the, the very specific activities that were going on, there really wasn't a, a lot of hubbub. Hubbub? How often do you get to say hubbub? Every day. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, but the good thing is that there are a lot of us who, you know, we've been thinking about October 1st, 2011, since October 1st. 2010 you know we we sort of know and we look forward to these um milestone events that that take place whether it's epcot's 25th uh hollywood studios 20th anniversary walt disney world's 40th and while i'm happy to see that disney is doing their own things there's a lot of us who are going down and doing things specifically for that including us and by say us I, i mean us the theme song we're all in this together because if I'm going down, I'm taking you all with me <clears throat> because uh, about a year ago when we started thinking about uh, October 1st and Walt Disney World's 40th anniversary, um, I had done, we had done a, fo- a 24-hour 
live broadcast from Walt Disney World, um, which we did. I, I, I don't remember about the last 20 hours of it or so, but we had a great time. Uh, we raised some money from ch for charity, and I knew that I couldn't do just another 24 hour. You have to, like Disney, you got to plus it up just a little bit. So um, on the way to our cruise, um, the WW Radio cruise and the Disney Dream this past February, I said, you know, we've done 24 hours. We've got to do something more. It's Walt Disney World's 40th anniversary. It makes sense to do 40 hours, 40 hours for 40 years. And uh, there was sort of no buffer in between my brain and my mouth. And it just sort of fell out. And many of you looked at me with horror, shock and disbelief, my wife notwithstanding <laughs> so, uh, of doing that. But I thought it would be fun to do 40 hours from Walt Disney World for the 40th anniversary. Uh, and now that we are getting closer and the insanity has truly set in, uh, we want to talk a little bit about what our schedule is going to be. And if you guys remember, any of you who watched in the box, and many of you did for all 24 hours, and I don't know what's harder, us walking around the parks for 24 hours <laughs> or those guys sitting home and watching us. I always say, I don't know who's crazier, the guy who sits here and talks to them himself or the people who are sitting there watching the guy sit by himself and, and talk to no one. Um, but we did want to talk about a little bit of a schedule uh, because the 24-hour show really kind of drove itself. You guys who were watching drove the content. The environment drove the content. We, we did things like we went to go see Star Wars Weekends. Uh, we went to Epcot. I don't remember half of what else we had done. Uh, we spent a long overnight at the Boardwalk Solarium, too. And Beaches and Cream, too. We did do Beaches and Cream. Yeah. Oh, yes, we did. You <laughs> you tried... Um, failed miserably. Failing miserably at, um, at, at downing an, an entire kitchen sink by yourself. Yeah, well... <laughs> I got nothing to say about it. You promised me you weren't going to bring that up. <clears throat> but we can't... You know, can't discount Steve's uh, effort, which was nothing short of disgusting. Wow. It was disgusting and epic. And <laughs> um, epic. Yeah, A Steve drew um, disgusting and awe-inspiring in seventeen minutes. Seventeen, 17 minutes. minutes. That's only um, because he didn't know about the record. He yeah, could have my favorite part. <laughs> yeah, he actually, the girl came over and he looked at her and he says, "I did it seventeen minutes. That's got to be a record, right?" She said, no, nine minutes. And he's, what? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me this he lost it. He wasn't pleased with that. But no, I think the first one went well. We just kind of, we had a, you came up with a loose schedule. We bounced around. I think it was very organic and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So we'll see how this one goes. 40 hours though. Yeah. And that's. Remember this. <laughs> Lou said it to me earlier. Remember this, Tony. At 24 hours, at 22 hours, we were sitting there saying two more hours to go. No such luck. Yeah. Well, it's I, I said team, it's a whole nother day. When we hit twenty four <laughs> hours, it's another day. Again, this sounded so good in my mind. Looks Forty hours, paper. right? <laughs> but then I said it's like the half marathon. Well, if you run a, a half marathon at Walt Disney World, it's about milestones. And so when you get to mile ten, you say, "Well, this is great. I only got three more miles to go. I could knock this out easily." But then if you're running a full marathon, you say, "Well, I'm at mile ten. Oh my, I, I have sixteen more miles to go." <laughs> It's going to be like this. When we hit the 22-hour mark, it's not like, hey, two more hours left. We've got 16 more hours left to go. Eight, no, we have 18 more hours. Left. <laughs> Look, I, we haven't even started, and I can't add already. So, uh, But, yeah, because of the nature of the show and the box and sort of walking around and, and uh, covering whatever is sort of going on around us, it is very organic. It is very uh, dynamic and very fluid. But we did want to get – some semblance of a schedule up. And actually, if you go and visit wdwradio.com slash 40, you can see our tentative schedule, which we have just posted. We'll kind of go through some of the highlights or lowlights here. Uh, we're going to start off, we're going to sort of start the day off early because we don't want to waste any awake time. And I don't know why I keep looking at you guys other than I've dragged you into this as well. <laughs> so we're going to start off at 8 a.m. and we're going to meet up um, just outside um just sort of it, sorry just inside um the magic kingdom entrance and we're going to start the broadcast from there because at 10 o'clock um they are going to be doing the cinderella castle uh 40th anniversary presentation on the four court stage so we'll be able to catch the parade <clears throat> and the presentation meg crofton and whatever kind of surprises and i think there probably will be some Open. uh that are going to be there so if you let me let's stop right here so we, we, we get to the Magic Kingdom, we watch um, the parade, we watch the presentation. What are you hoping for? Like, what would you like to see as a Disney fan for the 40th? What would you like to see them do or have? 
I'd like to see more. I'd like to see some things from the past. I like yourself. I grew up coming to Disney World every year since pretty much since it opened. I would like to see some of those things we saw in the past. One thing I was, I'm happy to see that they are coming out with some stuff now. I was a little disappointed to see it come out a little bit late. I'm not sure their mo behind that because I remember being there for the fifth, the tenth, the fifteenth, the twentieth, even and the and the twenty fifth. And even the, I mean, they were major events. They announced it. I remember walking in the gate, and every person had a chance at winning something. Right. You could win a car. Remember they would uh, someone, cars? Three, three people in front of us won a car. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Dodge Dart. I don't remember what it was back then, but it was a Chevy. It was, it was a, a Chevrolet. Chevy. But they made a, it was an ev- <laughs> it was an event, and I'm glad to see that they're gonna they are coming out with a little bit and gonna make this an event because. Much I I turn my birthday is the same as Disney World. I turned forty this year, so it's always been special to me to celebrate the twentieth on my twentieth and the twenty fifth. That's why I have a soft sp- spot in my heart for that big Pepto Bismol cake. I love it. I really enjoy <laughs> the the candy cake, as my son says. I even have a statue in my house. But I'm really excited about that. Hope to see stuff from the. Past. I will say that Walt Disney World has aged much better than you have. But <laughs> so, what about you? I mean, you you live here. You come all the time. You've been coming for years. You've been a Disneyland guy. What would you like to see? Well, probably some sort of a presentation where they'll have um, kind of a flashbacks of of all of the attractions that have gone by. Or maybe some of the shows, things that um, that no longer are there, but that were there for the for, uh, during the forty years. So something like that. So if Meg Crofton gets up and says, "Okay, <laughs> I'm going to bring back one attraction from the past," Scott Otis, you pick it right here, right now. What is it? Any attraction from Walt Disney World's past? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm putting you on the spot. American Journeys. <laughs> Magic carpet round the world. You clown. <laughs> What would you pick? No, if you had wings. If you, you had wings? Yeah. Wow, I dig that. I dig that about you. Because it was a free attraction. <laughs> Loved it. People in the box are saying Horizons. 20,000 Leagues was the one that came to my mind. Mr. Toad, uh, Toady, Toady, Mickey Mouse Review. Uh, what about you? I, I, I would have said 20,000 20, 20, Leagues, leagues. I was a huge... No, 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 you can't. I was, you can't. <laughs> You Deal can't. with it in Magic Journeys. You had your moment, and you lo- Meg Crofton is laughing at you right now. But I would say I'd say Twenty Thousand Leagues. But I was a huge Mickey Mouse review fan. I just think that was, or even bring something back like that. That's just a fun show. I always, when we talk about sort of these uh, extinct attractions, I always say, you know, we, I, I use the girlfriend analogy. You know, you don't miss it until it's gone. But I always say, you know, I wonder if if World of Motion or Horizons or some of these other attractions came back exactly the way they were the day that they left. I wonder how many people would be like, this is awesome. We'd be like, eh, it's not that great. It's 2011. The technology isn't there. I, a lot of people said Horizons, yeah. 20,000 Leagues. Um, world of Motion. World of Motion. Yeah. I agree with what you're yeah. saying. Like, we were just out in Disneyland, and I went on, got to go on Mr. Toad. <laughs> Sorry, and- Ray says Stitches Supersonic Celebration. <laughs> <laughs> I slept through that one. I don't even think I missed that one. But no, but I went out and got to go on Mr. Toad. If you go out to Disneyland... And I really did enjoy it. I was excited to see it. I think it's more about, for me, it's more about the memories of being a little kid. And I mean, when you're when I was eight years old, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride was right. as good as it got. You just loved it. Awesome. The submarine was the same. You could smell the the mildew <laughs> in the submarine. The musty they water were, smell. The musty, the musty water, water smell. smell. I mean, they were Love leaky. It. And uh, the pink, you know, everything about it, you really, really would miss it. <clears throat> yeah, when we, um, when we post this up in the... Um, in the show notes uh, if, over at www.radio.com, I'd love for people to come back and, and answer that same question. If Meg Crofton pointed to you in the audience and said, okay, box person, you can bring back one attraction. You've got the power and the money, and we're going to bring it back exactly what it would be. A lot of people are saying the original Journey into Imagination. Um, you would not get an argument from me or a lot of people uh, about that. So anyway, so uh, after... The uh, after the presentation over at ten o'clock, uh, we are going to basically tour the Magic Kingdom. Uh, basically, we're going to look at maybe even enjoy some of those original attractions from nineteen seventy one. Maybe we'll even stretch it a little bit and maybe go nineteen seventy two, seventy three, maybe up to seventy five. Maybe up to seventy five. We might because Eight, nine, you know the Tomorrowland <laughs> Transit Authority Wedway People Mover. That's right. Paging Mister Morrow, Mister Tom Morrow. 
your party from Saturn has arrived. So, yeah, we've got to do things like the TTA. Uh, of course, Becky Mankin from MEI and Mouse Fan Travel is asking, can we tour the ones only with air conditioning? <laughs> but I will tell you that Walt is shining down on us because we've seen the weather for this weekend. We're going to have a nice weekend. Low humidity, nice temperatures. It, it should be a lot of fun, especially for those of you who will be carrying the bags of gear, mm-hmm. So, which is nice. <laughs> As Tony looks over to Scott. Um, but, yeah, so we are going to tour... The Magic Kingdom. Uh, maybe we'll talk about some of its history. Sort of do a little mini history tour, which should be a lot of fun. Um, the best thing that you can do if you want to, if we're going to be in Walt Disney World and want to follow us or meet up with us, is to follow me on Twitter. I am at Lou Mangello, or I'll also post my updates over to our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash WDW Radio, or you can just text or call Tony or Scott, and they'll be happy to tell you where we're going. I can tell you, and you guys don't even know this, and box people, you don't either, Ooh. that we are also going to have a few special guest appearances mm-hmm. throughout the day. Um, <laughs> a couple of people who can help us enjoy and reflect and celebrate Walt Disney World's 40th. And Scott's giving me the googly eye because he has no idea who I'm talking about. Uh, or when they might show up because the schedule is going to be very dynamic. Uh, what we're also going to do is we're going to have sort of our, our meet of the month. Might as well. It's October. What I think we'll do is we'll meet down at the Plaza Rose Garden about 2 o'clock, sort of that lower level retro swan boat, baby. A little yeah. moment of silence for the Plaza Swan Boats down there. And uh, afterwards, maybe we'll go grab an, a Dole Whip because it'll be about that time. Taking we'll it little, back. We'll <laughs> We're taking it back. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I had Aloha Isle. I was going to go over to Sunshine Tree Terrace instead for a little orange bird retro yeah. stuff. Maybe we'll switch that up. Maybe we'll switch that up and go over to Sunshine Tree Tribe. Or people can choose. Or both. We'll they just have those plastic both. oranges? They don't have those oranges. anymore. I miss But them. I'm telling you, I feel it. I feel it in my bones that the orange bird is coming back. Or what if they bring those snacks back? Oh, bring back snacks. <laughs> <laughs> do bring, do you remember bring the ha- back Remember snacks. the ham witches? Yes, the ha- there yeah. you, ham witches. There you go. We're going old school here. Well, Michael Crawford would like that. So uh, we are going to spend the entire day uh, in the Magic Kingdom and into the evening. Well, of course, there'll be lots of food and snacking and probably some merchandise checking out. Maybe we'll go see guys like Noah and Robert Olszewski if we get a chance. Again, we're going to work that in with some of our special mm-hmm. guest appearances um, throughout the day. And then at nine o'clock, there is a special version of Wishes Firework Celebration we are going to meet up at the Main Street train station up on the second level. Probably meet around 8, 8.15 so we can sort of get there, get settled in, get some power to the box. It's all going to be about finding electrical <laughs> outlets throughout the day. Um, it, it's sort of – we're going to go back to 1971 and find all the original power outlets <laughs> from 1971. <laughs> uh, after, after, the, uh, after Wishes at 9 o'clock, we are going to leave the Magic Kingdom. We're all going to take the box – on a ride on the monorail, and we're going to head on over to Epcot because that night is the uh, not only Epcot International Food and Wine Festival, but it is the Wine and Dine Half Marathon. And uh, Tony shaking his head. You may think running is stupid, but a lot of other people don't. Hey, <laughs> and, <your> <laughs> and we actually have a lot of members of the WDW Radio running team who are running, my wife included. Um, is your wife running? No. No. Yeah, she's smart. Um, <laughs> they'll be running uh, for the Dream Team Project to, to raise money for the Make-A-Wish Foundation of America. So we are going to be there to cheer them on. And by cheer them on, meaning we'll see them at the after party. Uh, so we are going to be at the Wine and Dine post-race party. Please note that is a hard-ticketed event. You do need one of these fancy schmancy. Little wine and dine Ooh, finish line party tickets. Mine. Oh yeah, yeah. Mine this, is a is like a more generic Disney World ticket. Well, you got the special one. Oh, well, there you have. So uh, we're gonna be there, enjoying some snacks, cheering on the racers as they pass through uh, the finish line, and we'll be there probably until it goes the pretty week. Late. Yeah, it goes till about three. <laughs> I'm tired already. We're gonna go from there. We're actually going to head off-site. Uh, what we have done is, thanks to our friends over at All Star Vacation Homes, we have one of their beautiful seven-bedroom vacation homes. It's got a pool. It's got a kitchen. So start cooking up those Italian salted meats and snacks and treats. It's got a pool, it, which means I'm probably going to jump in with my clothes on again. Uh, it also has a, a media room. Maybe we'll check out a little yeah. Avatar, a little Star Wars. 
black the black hole. Overnight. I could just say one thing. You're everybody's looking. You're rolling your eyes that we leave at three a.m. <laughs> Realize this: at three a.m. we have twenty one more hours to go. Like why it's like, oh, are we going to stay up to three? Who can't? I mean, why are you going to bring me down? Why are you going to bring me down? Why are you going to rain on my your big idea? But the the um the other thing that is you know we we're as I was talking about the the charitable aspect of what the runners are doing and, and we are so grateful for that. Uh, I, there's two things that I want to announce and let you know about as well too, is that uh we the whole idea of the 24 hour show last year and a big motivator for the 40 hour show this year is not just the fun and the magic and the mayhem that is going to ensue. But it is uh, the opportunity to do some good for other people um, and to raise money, again, for the Make-A-Wish Foundation through our Dream Team project. Uh, I have been doing this with a, a, the incredible help of so many volunteers for so many years. Uh, we have raised over $100,000 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation and sponsored uh, a, a number of wishes over that time. I will tell you that just before we went on the air, I got an email from our friends over at Make-A-Wish, and I am, and I'm going to get all choked up when um, I announced that they have let us know that we have actually, up to today, raised enough money to sponsor another Wish. So uh, earlier this year, we were able to meet up with the Wish family. We're going to do that again next year, and my heartfelt thanks go out to all of you for your, uh, for your donations and your support. But the thing that we wanted to do for the 40th anniversary, which sounds a lot less crazy than staying up for 40 hours straight, <laughs> is do a charity auction. And so what we've decided to do is instead of 40 hours for 40 years, we're going to do 40 auctions for 40 years. And if you visit www.radio.com slash 40, you'll see a link over to a sneak preview page where you can see a list of the 40 auction items that we have that those people who are home watching from the box can bid on during the 40-hour show. Everything from custom, unique artwork. Uh, our friend Simon Phipps is doing a, a 365 Mickeys. He's painting a Mickey a day. He made a special Mickey with the Dream Team logo just for us. We have... Um, experiential things where we'll have co-hosts for the day. We'll have um, some stuff for the crews, a uh, private tour. We've got a, a, a set of uh, Ridley Pearson's signed Kingdom Keeper series. We've got everything from small items to bigger ticket items. Uh, so there's a little something for everybody. I, we brought back a gift basket from Alani, Ooh. courtesy of nice. our friends over at MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. Uh, Steve Barrett's going to give a Hidden Mickey tour. And did I see a dinner with Lou at, at Blue Zoo? And there actually is a dinner with, with <laughs> Lou at Blue Zoo <laughs> because I'm a giver. I'm doing it for the children. I'm doing dinner at, <laughs> with Blue Zoo uh, for the children. But so many people, Little Mismatched, uh, our friends over at Little Mismatched actually are donating something where they're going to not only have a gift set, but they're going to allow you to appear in a video that's going to appear on the Little Mismatched website. Um, we have stuff from Baby Cakes. You could also win a uh, an entire set of Celebrations magazine, including the 2011 Holiday Limited Edition yeah. book. Have you ordered yours yet? Yes. N liar. Uh, we are also <laughs> going to have, if you like Tim Foster, and really, how could you not, you can come on and do a top 10 with us. Jeff Curdy, uh, who has been on the show, we love Jeff Curdy. He's authored so many great books. We've got a, uh, an autographed copy of his Welcome Aboard, the creation of the Disney Dream, which you can only get on the Disney Dream, by the way. Um, lots of other stuff, too. Uh, signed pictures of, of Stacy. And everybody loves Stacy. Love She's a hugger. Uh, but yeah, go and check out. You'll find a link there to the charity auction sneak peek on the website. Those auctions are going to begin right before the broadcast starts. It'll end about 11 o'clock so we can hopefully get a tally together and have a final number by the time the midnight hour comes, which will be broadcasting probably from Celebration Hospital <laughs> as they're pumping me full of fluid <laughs> at that point. So Room for um, two. <laughs> all the bidding is going to take place on the website at www.radio.com. You will post your bids, uh, your name and your bid in the comments section, and then we'll sort of approve those and get those posted up ASAP. So it'll give you something else to uh, to do. But if you look at the sneak peek, you can start, start setting your mind as to some of the items and some of the experiences that might interest you. And again, thanks to everybody who contributed uh, either an item or an experience for that. And, and to all of you, uh, thank you in advance for bidding. Um, so the next morning, we are going to, um, I was almost going to say wake up at the All-Star Vacation Home, but we will hopefully be awake at the All-Star Vacation Home 
And we are going to, uh, we're going to need coffee. We're going to yeah. certainly need coffee and some sweet treats. And I wanted to make sure we did things outside the parks for those who want to come and be part of the 40-hour show with us, but maybe don't have a ticket to the parks. We're going to meet at 930 on the boardwalk over at the Boardwalk Bakery. We'll sit outside. We'll have a little nosh, a little coffee talk, and uh, we'll hang out there for a while uh, before we head into Epcot. We're going to stop by. Uh, we'll probably go and visit some of our friends who are doing some things as well. Um, I know that there's a food foodie fest going on. Yeah. We're going to go visit the Touring Plans people, my man Henry Work and his boys and girls over at uh, the Touring Plans meet, which I think is about 2 o'clock or 2.30-ish or so inside Epcot. That will probably help kick off as if we weren't eating enough all already. It's Food and Wine Festival, kids. Oh, yeah. Come with us. Let's sort of snack around and uh, and eat our way around the promenade. That that perked up Tony. We, so we talk about eating. Tony gets all excited. Um, and uh, I'm sure along the way, those of you who are in the box, those, those box people will be um, – probably coaxing us and goading us and maybe bribing us with uh, some donations to do 40 of whatever <laughs> for some donations for the Dream Team project. So, 40 um, whatever. 40 whatever. We'll so see. it should be very interesting. And there's another special guest. A very special guest. Who? I can't tell you. Who? I can't tell you. Because <laughs> I have to lock in his time. I'm still trying to lock in his time. Um, but... Um, you know who the special guest is. I do know. You do not know who the special guest is, do you? I don't no. believe I do. He, he, it's. Oh. You can whisper it to him. You can whisper it to him. We, and now the FC. And then what we'll do is after that experience over in Epcot, we will probably make our way over to Disney's Hollywood Studios. That's the late night park. Um, we'll either we're not going to walk. We're going to take we're going to take a <laughs> boat to, to Disney's Hollywood Studios, and we'll probably end there because I believe the studios closes at midnight. So. Um, somewhere around there. But the best way, if you are going to want to join us, everybody is welcome to come while we're in the parks or on the boardwalk, wherever it might be, um, to participate in the 40th anniversary events with us. Again, this is a very rough schedule. You'll have an idea of where we are. It, just look for the crazy guy, tired man holding a laptop that, that walking around the parks. That'll be us. Or again, follow me over on Twitter or Facebook uh, for updates. Um, what are we missing? What else are we missing? I'm just uh, wondering what prompted you <laughs> to invite a special guest at hour 27. Like, what, because, what good will come of that? Because somebody it, who you're clear, who's clearly someone that you're excited about having. There. I'm very excited. Why about would it? you expose our gibberish to them at hour 27? <laughs> Incoherent interview. I don't know what. Well, that's because what I'm hoping is I can just turn the box towards him and let him go for like two hours, and I'll just nap on a bench. Oh, it's a sound, now it's sounding pretty. It's sweet. a him. It is a him. There you go. And you, you know who it is. Now you know who it is. Do you think that this would not be a fun person to talk to? I, this person has. Tell me who it is. Oh, he didn't? No. You oh, told, I'll tell you he later. He told you to tell me. So, uh, no, well, this person has a a direct connection to Walt Disney World history. Correct. Yes. So, it uh, it should be very interesting. So, um, let us do this. Let us um, again. I want to direct you guys over to uh, wdwradio.com slash forty. That's where you can find more information. That's also where you can watch and chat uh, during the entire uh, event. Uh, it, it's a great way for you if you can't be there live. We're going to bring, like we did with the Expo and Alani, we want to bring Walt Disney World's 40th anniversary to you. And I can tell you, too, that in addition to the charity auction that you guys who are in the box, and again, you sort of, we've given you the name, you are the, um, you are the box people. In addition to the charity auction and being able to watch and chat and interact with us and tell us what you want to see, we're going to have some surprises for you guys as well. We're going to maybe have a couple of giveaways. I'm sure that Becky Mankin from MEI and Mouse Fan Travel is going to do something very special, as she always does, for the box people, because we do love the box people. Um, should I apologize in advance for anything that's said after hour 20? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I think that's it. I think that's it. Again, we'll be posting updates uh, as they happen or as some things change as we're able to sort of maybe lock in some of these guests into a certain time. Again, www.radio.com slash 40 is where to find out. Uh, I am both um, excited 
and uh, deathly frightened <laughs> of <very scary>. what <laughs> this weekend is going to bring, but it's uh, it is going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing and meeting a lot of new friends. I'm looking forward to whatever Disney may have in store because I just have a feeling, maybe it's a, a, a wishful feeling, maybe a surprise or two in store. Little orange bird, come on, brother. I'm waiting for you. Um, so with that, if you are watching in the box or watching on YouTube, please join us again this weekend, wdwradio.com slash 40. I guarantee you, you will see my friend Tony Caggiano and Scott Otis I am Lou Mangello from www.radio.com. Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. um, thank you all for watching, and uh, I look forward to seeing you guys this weekend for the 40th. So with that, uh, good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow. <laughs> See you out there. Right. You guys can sing the Little Orange Bird song if you want. The little Orange Bird. Thank yeah, you. you got to work with it. <laughs> I don't know. My work here is done.